Hello. Uh, today we will uh, learn how heap works in Linux systems in glibc, and uh, we will look at it uh, from Radair from the tool. Uh, what is heap? Uh, you will be surprised, but heap is a structure. Uh, maybe you expected me to speak about something else. <coughs> um, from Wikipedia, we can read this. The heap is a tree based that structure which satisfies the heap property. What is heap property? I don't know. <coughs> but from Russian uh, Wikipedia of the same <laughs> the same article, we can get more uh, we can get more uh, details um, that uh, in Lisp um, the dynamic memory allocation was done using the heap data structure. So that is why uh, region of memory for dynamic memory allocation now is called heap, a little bit of history. And there is a link for, to Foreman book. Um, OK, Google, what is heap? Uh, so heap is disorderly collect disorderly collection of objects placed absurdly on top of each other. So some pile, I don't know, there is some uh, bundle. So, <clears throat> uh, so in reality, heap is uh, just memory uh, area. Uh, of your program, uh, which grows towards stack and located in uh, low addresses, not far from your program data, from your text of your program. <clears throat> and you can see heap uh, by um, inspecting proc uh, file system. There is a maps uh, file, which will show you that uh, this region of memory, uh, starting from 555, something ending with 555, with a read and write access, uh, is a heap. So it's marked as a heap. You also can see the stack uh, on higher addresses. And you can see your uh, binary itself is mapped to another address. So the heap is easy, easy to see from proc file system for each process. Uh, how to deal with heap? Uh, when you write a program, um, uh, you can uh, get memory from heap by uh, calling malloc, and you can return uh, memory by calling free. This is glibc um, functions. Um, yeah, today we will uh, look only at glibc and Linux because on other systems like Windows or uh, not glibc but other uh, libraries. Um, there might be different implementation of malloc or alloc allocators. Um, and here is example a program where you can see that uh, you get 10 bytes of memory from heap. Uh, you copy some few bytes uh, there and you print its address and the actual uh, interpret, you try to interpret it as a string. So you can see that the um, it was allocated at this address, and uh, you have this data. So maybe if you if you have experience to write C programs, maybe you um, no surprise for you. Uh, uh, the question: Is there always heap as a stack? For example, stack there is always stack. But what about heap? Uh, if you write something like this: void main printf just some string and compile it and run. Will be there heap or not? Because we don't use heap, right? So what is your guess? Heap or not heap? You don't use heap, so will it be allocated for you? Always. That's wrong answer. Um, there is no heap actually. Uh, when you check memory maps from Radar, there is a command dm uh, or dmha. No heap section, so there is no heap. So where is my heap? I have no heap. <coughs> Um, so it means that heap will be allocated only when you use it. But um, you can see on my screenshot that I stopped debugger before printf because printf actually inside itself allocates memory. So after execution of printf, you can see my heap appears here. So printf uses heap inside. So now we can see 132 kilobytes of heap appeared from nothing, like a magic. So how it appeared, why there was no heap, but now there is a heap. 
uh, let's check our program by traces. So we can see some strange syscalls like brk with null as argument and then brk with some address. And let's check our heap address. Looks similar, right? So it seems like uh, this guy will uh, create heap class. Actually, yes. So if you check what is brk, um, it's a system call which uh, changed location of so-called program break. The program break is a line uh, between um, in your memory virtual space between uh, data segment and stack segment. So it's kind of history, historical term, which uh, means this line. And you can move this line. You can just make it upper, bigger, bigger, bigger towards stack. And this area which you will get uh, is called heap. So BRK is a one way to get a heap. Actually, there is a structure uh, mm struct in, in a Linux kernel which has start BRK, BRK. Also, it has some stack. Now, where is it? Start stack. So, uh, your program has these pointers and you can move them. When they are equal BRK and start BRK, you have no heap. But when you moved it, you will get heap. <clears throat> So okay, OS gives uh, memory via BRK and glibc manages uh, with malloc and free. Uh, so how glibc manages? Uh, there is documentation glibc uh, which explains uh, uh, what it explains. A little bit of history that uh, glibc allocator uh, is uh, the fork of Thread, POSIX threads malloc, uh, which itself is a fork from Duglia malloc. So it's a heap style malloc, uh, which means the chunks of uh, data which you can get from, uh, from glibc using malloc, they are organized uh, in heaps, uh, kind of heap structure. Actually not, I don't think it's heap right now, but maybe it was in the past. So malloc, uh, uh, glibc under, uh, underneath manage it for you. Um, so uh, how, it, uh, how it does, uh, glibc do, does all housekeeping um, using some arenas. Arena is a big chunk of memory, um, a kind of a pool, pool of memory from where uh, you can get uh, small pieces. Also, um, when you return memory by free, when you call a free, um, the uh, memory will be back to arena, but it will be back to some bins, kind of trash bins. And those bins, uh, like in Japan, we have uh, bins for glass or bins for paper. Also in glibc, you have bins for uh, small chunks, for big chunks. Uh, it, it's needed for recycling. So. When you next time will call malloc, you will get uh, very fastly uh, some chunk which already wasn't used before. So malloc, uh, you don't need to call BRK, get more memory from operation system. You can reuse. Uh, so this is how mm, glibc does the work. Uh, and uh, glibc um, keeps uh, chunks when you return them back. Um, in the structure, the structure name is uh, there is a pointer m chunks pointer. So basically, the payload part is your data. You can store data here. Uh, before your data, there is a size uh, because uh, malloc always returns aligned address, so it always multiply of eight. Uh, you can use um, three last sig least significant bits. To store some flags like allocated arena map uh, or previous in use, we we will not uh, discuss it. But there is some hacks to store some flags. So basically, uh, it's like a TCP packet. You have a header and you have your data. The same for your memory. You have a your data and you have some headers. Um, when it's in use, there is only two headers. Actually, only one size. But when uh, you free this chunk. Um, uh, your data will be uh, removed and they will be pointer to forward pointer to next 
chunk in bin and previous chunk in bin. So bins, uh, chunks in bins stored in double linked list. Um, okay, let's look uh, at chunk under radar. We will write a simple program. Uh, we will get 10 bytes of memory. Uh, we will copy there um, some string. We will print it and we will try to debug it. <clears throat> so in Radar, actually, if you SSH to lab um, and run, uh, let me close. Can you see my screen? Uh, Uh, if you run uh, R2 uh, with uh, minus D and for this, we can just bin ls, we can use bin ls. Uh, and you execute, actually, bin ls is not good. Actually, we need this program. But you don't have it. Okay, uh, you don't need to do it, I'll, I'll just show you. But if you, if you type fast, you can type it. Um, uh, and in right there, if we um, open this program, uh, we execute until main and then uh, let's execute until malloc. So malloc is run in uh, Rx, we have um, uh, our chunk, and we can inspect it uh, by, there is M, uh, D, M, H. And there are a lot of memory commands, sorry. You can see uh, there are a lot of commands to inspect heap. Uh, and one of them, DMH, DMH C, C stands for chunk. And we already know our chunk um, address, DMH C at RX. And um, this is our actually payload, so it's our data. Data will be stored here. But uh, if you remember, there is, a, there is a header, size and previous size, each of them uh, of eight bytes, so we need to do minus 16 and then we can inspect it so we can see okay radar detected struct malloc chunk at this address you can see the previous size size this flags uh, forward and back uh, and actual data uh, let's execute a little bit more until uh, we copy data here so we copy it uh, and now mm -hmm. And now we can see our data here, so um, so we can look at any uh, chunk of uh, memory which malloc gave us in Rodeo. Uh, let's move on. So basically, that's what I did here on this slide. You can inspect any chunk, uh, and uh, as you may see on this screenshot, three chunk uh, will use forward and backward uh, pointers. But when you when it's not free, when it's in use, this data will be uh, kind of fake data. It's just your payload here. So it's because uh, if it's not free, you you will not going to use this uh, pointer. So heap is tricky. Yeah, you can use malloc and free, uh, but it's easy to make mistakes. Uh, for example, uh, if you free, if you do free some um, um, part of memory, but uh, you will st still uh, you you still keep the pointer to this memory, and someone will receive this memory again, and it, it will be kind of two pointers to the same memory region. So it's used after free uh, bug. Also, there, there is double free and some other techniques like House of Spirit. I don't know how it works. There is some explanations. And actually, there are a lot of tricks um, you can see. 
there is a repo how to heap from CTF team shellfish. They have, I think, more than 10, maybe more than 20 techniques how to hack um, heap. And today we will check only one, easiest one, use after free. Um, it's on pavnable.kr, it's available. Uh, I already put it on our lab. Uh, you can find it. You can find it here as Pavnable CPP. You can check this source code. Uh, the source code um, you can find in source uh, the definition of human class and definition of man class. And then in the main function, we, uh, we create a man, which is an instance of man class. Actually, uh, man. Uh, inherits uh, human, so it's kind of child of human. Uh, so we create a man and we create a woman, there is also woman uh, plus. And then in infinite loop, uh, we ask use after or free. So when you type one, you will just call introduce uh, method on man. It will basically say, I'm a nice guy. And also it will call uh, his parent introduce method. My name is, it will print name and uh, age. Uh, if you press two, uh, it will um, will create, it will call uh, this new char, it will call malloc underneath. Uh, uh, so it will ask GDPC to give more memory. And uh, it will read from program argument from the file um, as much bytes as you put in first argument. So second argument is a file name, first argument program is a number of bytes. And third one will uh, basically delete um, the man and woman. Uh, so underneath it will call free. So we have uh, initialization, we have removal, but actually after removal, after free, you still have uh, uh, M and woman pointing to this memory, so it's kind of you are using them after free. Uh, uh, hard to explain, but let's let's see. Um, so what you can run, you you can uh, compile it C plus plus pubnable. Uh, you have CTP. So let's do it. You must have a dot out. So you can play with it, you can use it, so it will print you message like, my name is Jack, and my name is Jill. You can uh, free it, so it will be removed, and then you can try to use it again, but it will be segmentation fault, because um, malloc um, will destroy a little bit your data. Also, we can, uh, we can I use second option for this. Let's say we want to allocate 20 bytes from file uh, input. So, and then if you press two, it will be your data is allocated. So, basically, it will allocate 20 bytes of memory and then it will read this file into this memory. <coughs> uh, I will use. Uh, Radar profile, which uh, defines stdout as different terminal, stdin as stdin.txt. Uh, in stdin.txt, uh, I have already these commands like use, free, and then two times I do allocate, and then I use it again. And then I defined argument as 53 bytes, and second argument is input. Uh, you already have this uh, profile on your home folder, so you don't need to create it. And also stdin you also have. So what we can do, we can run radar with this profile um, in debug mode and debug our program. R2, profile, debug, 
and then uh, we can press our DCU main, continue until main, and then uh, go to visual mode. In visual mode, you will see the main function. What next? Uh, uh, let's execute program until allocation of memory for jack. Uh, so to execute, you can press big S, big S, let's step out, uh, you can see allocation is here. Okay, let me, let me go until, I'll go until here. Yeah, if you execute program until uh, the loop, uh, where you can choose free uh, use after or free, uh, at this point in your RAX register, you will see uh, the jack MFT. So you will see that uh, in this chunk, uh, there is a uh, data for jack and Indeed, you can see his name is located in this part. Uh, this is his age, and these two pointers we don't know yet what is it. In this data, we don't know. So we we have one, two, uh, six, uh, uh, six pieces of eight bytes. Uh, this is Jack. This is how Jack looks like in uh, in Radex. and this is how Jill. Uh, Jill is a woman. Actually, the same difference, only the name and age. Um, if you execute a little bit more, uh, so this is object. So call rx is call introduce. We will skip it. And here is the Jill, the girl. Uh, <clears throat> so what it does, actually. Uh, um, when you uh, execute this part of code, uh, case one, introduce function, uh, in RX register you will get the, um, as, as I showed you, you will get the um, address of memory in uh, heap, which points to Jack, and the first address, uh, the first address, uh, here in his uh, in his structure uh, points to uh, virtual table with table of uh, oh, at this time we inspect woman we inspect Jill so uh, this address if you seek to this as command is for seek and go to visual mode you will see that it's a virtual table of woman so virtual table in C plus plus the structure uh, for your class which will link you to its methods. So uh, the object has a pointer to virtual table, actually not at the beginning, but in, in the middle of it. Then uh, it will plus eight. So it actually will go to this address 70. And at this address, at address 70, we will have another link. So this is actually address, it's not assembly. Uh, it has another link to introduce function. So it's kind of a lot of jumps. You go to memory uh, from in, in to heap memory, then you read the data, which is actual address to virtual table, then you to plus eight. It's also address. You read this address, you jump here, and it's finally your introduce function. So this those lines, they do it. They read the address, they plus eight, then they read another time this address, and then they uh, they call it. <coughs> so it's um, how it works. What we're gonna do, uh, uh, okay, let's see these chunks. Actually, in Radar, there is a dmhg command. dmhg 
the other equipment part of the ceramic. You can specify arena uh, for this command, and you can see um, chunks which already um, located, and you can see their sizes. So we know that this chunk of size uh, uh, 40 uh, in hex is uh, for the jack, and this is for drill. This is I don't know for, for what some other chunk. So and after free. Uh, when we execute a little bit more PC, so now our RIX is has a number uh, three, so we choose to free them. Let free. That basically will hold delete. Oh, I will not execute. Uh, and then we will look at memory again, and you can see that okay, they are free. They already. Free. So it means that uh, uh, we just run this part of port. Uh, we just did delete. But actually, we still keep pointers to this area of memory. So we still keep, uh, we can call introduce, but it will crash. Uh, uh, that's why we will call uh, the second option and we will try to allocate data the trick is um, uh, if you allocate 53 bytes of um, memory uh, the glibc from the beans it will try to recycle these uh, the memory chunks it will give you the same chunks uh, you need to guess this number so it's uh, it's not hard because you already know the size um, so if you if you know the size of previous previously used chunk, you can ask um, malloc to give the same size, and most likely it will give you the same the same size because the logic uh, is very simple. It's first fit logic. So when the first uh, the last uh, freed chunk is found, it will simply give you. So if you allocate the chunk of fifty three bytes, uh, here we will run. So now we have in RX second uh, second option. So if we will allocate it, so you can see this pointer looks similar to what we had for. Zero. The pointer looks similar to <clears throat> not much similar. But let's let's check. We can see that this chunk is already allocated. So it was free, and now it's allocated. And let's see what we have at this address. So we can see that we have uh, it's a Jill, so it's a girl. And let's execute a little bit more until read. So we will read um, data from file, and this is your data is allocated. So let's see. What happened? <clears throat> because I already have exploit here, uh, basically what it did is, uh, but let me change it a little bit. So 
So instead, uh, in input, I have exploit. Uh, but if you put in input, uh, for example, a a a b b b, b b and run there again, b p main, and then we'll go until here. So we run first time, so it's option number one, then it's option number three, then option number two. We open file and then we read, okay. So yeah, now you can see that uh, in chunk uh, with Jill, which was in past it was Jill, but now it's allocated for us, and we can write everything here. And as you as you remember, the first pointer was pointer to a virtual table. So and since we can get the same uh, memory, we can write here uh, any other address, and then we can uh, ask to use it. And instead of introduce, it will go to our shell function. There is a shell function, give a shell, it's for simplicity. Um, so let's do it. <clears throat> Just a second. So it's exactly what we did. Uh, we allocated the same uh, the same region of memory, which in past was Jill, but right now it's under our control. Um, and uh, yeah, if you if you will try to press one, and we will try to run introduce function, um, the uh, RX uh, register will will get our rubbish. Uh, garbage data and it, it will not be able to execute because it's kind of just garbage. Uh, so, and if you remember in human class, we have a shell function, so we just need to find this address and put this correct address. And how to find it? Uh, let's inspect um, the Jack object once again. Uh, we will go to the, we will follow the first uh, pointer. We will go to virtual table, and uh, in virtual table you can see that uh, there is actually a link to uh, give a shell give shell function. It finishes with five or four. So you can see this five or four, because the man is a um, is a child of human, so it also has the link to this um, give shell function. So what we need to do, we just need to get this address. Uh, subtract eight uh, from this, and that's it. So basically, we we get, we are getting this address. We do minus eight. We will get this one. Uh, we will put it uh, in reverse order because uh, it will be read uh, from from back. And that's our input. We will put it. Uh, and ask uh, and run the the comma uh, the program with our input file, which basically has just this address and fifty three bytes uh, of location to to get the same chunk. So if you will do it, you will get you will get shell. Just a second. and input so and we will uh, free then we will use once uh, we will use it two times because there are two objects and then uh, actually we will allocate two times and then we will use so we have a shell uh, yeah that's it thank you uh, yep <coughs> a little bit messy uh, 
but if you have questions or if you want to repeat this in more slowly way, let me know. Yep. Sorry, the mi microphone, please. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, guys, so if you're going to ask the question, please ask for microphone, please. Cool. Thank you. Uh, so my question is essentially we can use or better say maybe like an attacker can use potentially the same approach to utilize vulnerability in the code and exploit the shell access uh, from one of the functions that implemented by a programmer. Yes, yes, you can reuse other functions. Uh, if you, uh, for example, in this case, uh, you can uh, put any address to any other function in your code. Uh, mm. If you know the address, what will be prerequisites for utilizing it in real life? For example, uh, to find out this address, you need an access for the uh, for how the application was executed. So, like on which layer essentially you can do it? Like, uh, can you do it on the web application? I don't think so. Or can you? For example, uh, you can do it in any application. Last uh, big issue, not last, but. A uh, big issue was with WhatsApp. The, there was a double free issue, and the guy received a lot of money uh, because he, he he just sent a GIF file, and after double free, he gets a remote connection to his Linux machine. Uh, so you can execute it in browsers. Uh, if you check uh, security updates for Chrome, which you can get every month or weekly, you will see user after free, double free, and many types of these errors. Um, also, they are in Linux kernel. They are everywhere. They are difficult to execute because, in our case, we already know addresses. I made it easy. I switch off ASLR. But in real life, you need to leak address. You need to do a lot of preparation uh, step. You need to uh, understand what is the address. There are other techniques to do it. For example, print theft vulnerabilities or some other techniques. When you get the address of this program, you can supply it, and then you can jump to this address and get shell. So it's usually multi multi step exploitation. It's just one part, and it's very very simple. Mm, well, usually attackers have like quite an amount of time to try to utilize it, right? Or maybe like a whole year or half a year. Probably yes. Yeah, interesting. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. No more questions.